This is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating these liquid teardrop splatting things that are so popular right now. We're going to move them around. It's going to be super good. Here in After Effects, let's just have a look at what that thing is that we saw. So we're going to be creating this kind of organic, liquidy thing as it swirls around. We're not going to worry about any of this text stuff for now. That's... That'll be like the next tutorial. Let's just do this sort of viscous blob of junk. Okay, so let us go to create a new composition and we'll start fresh from the beginning. Don't worry about your frame size or frame rate or any of that stuff. Just be aware that mine is 29.97 frames per second. Yours might be faster, might be slower, whatever. So just, you know, just uh, make yours like mine if you want. If not, who cares? So the first thing to do is to create the path of the motion. So this will serve as a guide for us to make manual changes to the blob, and it will also serve as a way to uh, guide the motion of this thing and get everything squared away before we start making those manual changes. So I've got my pen tool, uh, I've turned the fill off, I've got the stroke set on two, and I'm gonna draw out a shape. And so I'm going to start off screen, making nice, big, wide lines, okay? And so it's going to come up and then down like this. So it's going to curve, and I'm just kind of drawing out big curves. You know, you can make it go up here or turn around or however you want. So I'm holding down space, uh, space bar whenever I move this thing around, kind of like this. So I want, I want kind of large arcs just so you can kind of get a feel for what's going on. This isn't exactly like the uh, the intro, but, uh, you know, hopefully it is interesting enough that uh, you get into it. So I'm going to work with a curve like this. I'm happy with how this curve looks. You know, it's kind of, kind of doing whatever for me. Uh, I might want to just adjust this first point here, take this sharp, sharp edge off, there we go, smooth that out. So it's gonna go whoa, like this. So let's see how it goes. So this is gonna be our path. Let's make a blob. So step one done, moving on to step two, make the blob. I make my blob by uh, making like a circle here. So it doesn't have to be very exact. I'm just drawing like this. And this will be our blob. Um, we'd like it to have a fill. And in this case, I guess it's like a pink. Whatever, don't worry about what it is, and we'll take the stroke off. Okay, so that's going to be our blob. So you've made the blob. Step three here is going to be to get the blob to move along our path. So this is your last chance to make any alterations to the path. Uh, maybe like this. I don't know. I'm less confident now. Who cares? So this is our path. Let's uh, change this to be a yellow layer. Let's rename it guide, all right, and I'm just going to click the shy button here so I can make it to uh, come and go whenever. So we're going to go in here, go into the contents, go into the shape, go into the path, and select the path. You can tell the path is selected because it has these squares on the points. So let's pay close attention to where those points are. Here, 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 here. Cool. We're going to copy that, which is control C, command C, edit, copy, whatever. And then we're going to go in here. We're going to go to its transform. So we're going to transform position. We're going to go to the position and we're going to paste. Okay. Now all those points we took from that yellow line are now here on a blue line. And that blue line is actually the position of this circle blob. Okay. You see how that's working out? Pretty cool, eh? So what it's done is it's put linear keyframes at the start and end. So that's a keyframe now, and that's a keyframe now. And these two in the middle are roved keyframes. So they will move across time. So if I say take this one, okay, and I go right click and I go keyframe assist and I easy ease them. See how those two keyframes moved? They move depending on where these two keyframes tell them to be. All right. So that's you know, that's something to think about, I guess. Uh, what I'd like to do is take one of them, I think this one, and I'm gonna make it its own keyframe, all right? So I wanna be able to control when 
when things are coming in and out of this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna easy ease that one like this and I'm gonna have the end end flat. Okay, now I'm gonna go in here and at this stage, I'm adjusting the speed and motion of this blob. So um, one thing I never want it to sort of reach zero. So I always want it to have some kind of motion going on. And then I'm gonna pull these handles out here to kind of give it a bit of a pause or a slowdown at this stage. So it's like, and then it speeds up and moves along its way. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not so much there. <laughs> so this I think is too slow. So what I'm gonna wanna do is maybe push this handle a bit like this and you know, maybe pull this handle a bit like this. Maybe I even want to bring this handle up so that it's starting fast and then slowing. Cool, cool. So these are all things you can edit here in the graph editor. So now that's slow and then that's fast or whatever. So that's pretty cool. I'm into this. Uh, now I'm going to take these and I'm going to just slide them to sort of shorten up what's going on. Okay, so now I'm good with this motion. So I've got it going where I want, and now I have it going when I want. Now I need to take this blob, and I wanna get the blob oriented along this path. Now we go layer, and we would like to transform the layer to auto-orient along this path, okay? So now you can see this is at an angle and this blob here is also at an angle. So we look through the rest of its time on this path and you can see that it's always oriented to be along the path, which is exactly what we want because it's gonna save us some work when we are doing this manual keyframing process. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is call up the uh, scale of this thing and I'm gonna hit U so I can look at all of the keyframes on here. And I kinda of want it to be a little bit smaller at the end, and I'd like it to be uh, quite a bit bigger at the beginning. So it's big, and it's getting small as it's going off into the distance. So am I really happy with this motion? Mm, I really feel it needs to be a bit faster here. Yeah, I'll probably survive with this. Okay, so pretty much all of the automatic things are done, uh, except, for making this look a little bit more liquidy. So, how do we do that? Well, I want it to be more chaotic and liquidy when it's going faster. So how do I do that? Well, I go and I add a wiggle paths. And the wiggle paths, as you can see, is messing with the edges of this path. So if we go into the wiggle paths, it's got a lot of things in here. So the size is how big of a distortion it is. Uh, the detail is how many distortions, so really, really tiny. Let's leave that at like one. Is it a corner? Is it smooth? We definitely want it smooth. How many wiggles per second? Uh, zero, please, I think. That would be fine. You can set this to whatever you want. Set this to like 24, and then every frame is gonna be bouncing around. So you could do that. You could set it to zero. Depends on how chaotic you want that to be. Now. Let's link the size to the position. So what did I do there? Well, I took the size, used the pick whip, holding Alt, click on the stopwatch here, it allows you to enter in an expression, then you take this pick whip and you move it here to the position. Now, this is saying that this will now equal position part zero, which is nine, five, four. Now that's not correct. We don't want it to be position part zero. So delete the part zero, put in a point, and type in speed, all right? Now what does that mean? Well, at this point the speed is zero. So click on position, go to the graph editor, and this is showing the speed. So the speed at this point is 11,693.79 pixels per second. Speed down here is in the 2000s, right? So you get an idea, that's what's going on. So we need to do some more things to this. So it will be the speed of the position divided by uh, 300 maybe. You know, that could be good. So you see like at its fastest, you know, it's getting most chaotic. If you want it to be more chaotic, then uh, 
you know, leave it at 200 or 100 or something, but I don't know. You get the idea that this is now making this a little bit less uniform and it's going to give us a little bit more play when it comes to messing around. So that, I mean, that, that seems like a really bad relationship advice, but uh, you know, if you keep it loose, you get more play when you're messing around. Okay. So we are going to now go ahead and start animating this path. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we go here into the contents, we go into the shape, we go into path one, and let's set a keyframe for the path. And then we want to go to the end when it's at rest, and I'm going to set a keyframe there as well, because I want it to end sort of as a circle also. So, I mean, we'll, we'll be tweaking these as it goes, but since we are starting at no acceleration, it doesn't have much of a tail, right? on the parts where it has the most acceleration, that's when I think it should really have more of a tail to it. So let's go through that graph editor again and find some fast parts, or just have a look at this thing's position, right? And you should be able to tell by looking at these dots, you know, the further apart the dots are, the crazier the animation should be, all right? So these dots are a little bit hard to see, so let's change the layer here to be like an orange, so now it's a little bit easier to see those dots. Um, but, you know, don't worry, don't worry too much about the dots, I guess is what I'm saying. The point is, is you are just gonna want to take this thing, you're gonna wanna mess around and go into its points, grab them points, pull them out, and you wanna reform this thing to look more blobulous. And you also wanna to try to maintain sort of like a, a curve that matches the curve of this line. So you're gonna to have to do things like pinch in the end point here. And you wanna always have the tip and the tail landing on this line, all right? So that's one piece of advice, but a lot of this section now that you're doing is gonna be a lot of manual labor, and it's gonna be a lot of things like, you go into the corner, you wanna go in and make sure that this point is on the curve, and that the rest of the points make sense along the curve, and you know, maybe you gotta stretch it out a little bit, and uh, there's gonna be a lot of manual work in here for you, but hit you to call up all these things, the easiest way to do it is to go to points where there's gonna be a lot of change and make make sort of small adjustments as you go. So, you know, we're going from here to here to here. The next spot is here and then it's there. So, at this point, we're gonna move that tail again along here. We know it's speeding up, so we're kind of elongating this along this path. It's getting thinner, perhaps, you know? And you don't want to uh, to do anything uh, rash. You don't want to mess around with moving the, uh, the front parts too much. But uh, that's because that is the center of mass for this thing. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go through, you're gonna find points where this deviates too far from the line. I'm gonna speed up all of my adjustments and then we'll go through and we'll talk about them a little bit. How does that sound? As you can see, at this point, I have a heap of keyframes, good for me, and uh, I have this thing kind of blobbing around the screen. So that's super good. So the things I want you to look out for are things like the tail coming way off the track. That's gonna look unnatural when viewers have a look at it. So in instances where that happens, you just wanna bring that point on, bring it back into line. It's fine if a lot of the body kind of comes to the outside of the guide, as long as it's not on the inside of the turn. We would assume that momentum would pull the blob sort of off the track, so I wouldn't worry too much about things like that. But you'll be able to tell visually as you go through this process, you know, you just run through it and be like, hmm, yeah, that seems wrong, or hmm, yeah, that seems correct. And uh, the big takeaway, though, is keep the top and the tail on the track. That's that's the big thing. So as long as the head is on there and the tail is on there, the rest of it should seem 
pretty normal, right? Now, something else to consider. Uh, if you want to retime this mess, uh, this is something else that's good to know. You can select all of these. You can hold down Alt, and then you can stretch them out. So if you want to last longer or shorter, but beware that as you shorten this, you may be causing it to fall off the track. So you'll have to go back in and readjust when you want to retime it. So that's why I said you want to make sure you have the space and time of where you want this blob to be. You want that on lock before you go doing other things. You know, you want to just make sure that it's as you want it before you get in here and start doing all of this manual work to try to fix it up. Okay, so what happens when we look at this now? Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, there are a few things that I should fix, like it's too blobby off the jump. You know, it's not, you know, it's not svelte like uh, like I think it should be. Um, this should already be uh, blobulous by the time it's coming in. So I probably want to shore that up a little bit just so that it's not... Uh, it's not so crazy, you know, and you want to reduce like quick changes and stuff like that, which is hard to do when you're working keyframe to keyframe, but I'm sure you can get it. But if you've gone through, you've done all these steps and, uh, you know, you're able to make these, these quick little adjustments, then you've moved on to sort of the last stage here, which is when you want to just watch this back, look for any parts that stick out to you as erroneous but uh, now you've got this weird flying fish thing that you can make use of. But that is pretty much it. This has been a pretty long tutorial and we haven't even covered all of the things I really wanted to talk about. So there will be more tutorials on this kind of a subject coming up in the future, but you're gonna need to subscribe for those. So this has been Evan Abrams uh, talking to you about After Effects and motion graphics and you know, that's what I talk about here on the channel. So if you have questions about this tutorial, you should leave them in the comments. If you wanna see some of the other tutorials currently available on this channel, I'll put uh, some links to those uh, right here in front of you. And if you want to ask questions about, uh, you know, After Effects in general or suggest some tutorial topics, hit me up on the Facebook or on the Twitter at EC Abrams. Uh, the links to all these things are in the description and head over to evanabrams.com. There's cool things you can download there, like uh, maybe the project file for the intro to this, or maybe not. I don't, I don't know if I'll put it up. You'll find out if you look at the links in the description. Anyway, uh, this has been Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, put them in the comments to this video, and uh, I'll try to help you out when I'm able. And uh, stay tuned for more, because uh, there's going to be more about this and other After Effects topics coming up. I try to post things every week, but sometimes I get busy. But you'll have to subscribe to find out. So uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you around the Internet. Thanks a lot, and have a nice day.